with the Virgil example, yeah. right? And his co-branding with multiple companies like IKEA making their chairs better, yeah. uh, water bottles making, uh, you know, water feel better in cooler, your hand, cooler, whatever, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. From a, a legality standpoint, should designers be worried in making those partnerships? And what kind of things should they make sure to protect when working with those companies? Yeah, so, I mean, I think, I think not everybody's built for the model that Virgil employs, right? Like, Virgil is able to do it in a way where consistently he hasn't watered down his, his core values and his aesthetic. Like, he's almost overdone it to the point where it's like, Every time he does it, it makes him look, you know, more legit, right? Mm -hmm. Other people, I think, if you if you were to do a, a collab with Coke and it didn't come off right, or Avion or something like that, you might be like, "Oh, this dude sold out," right? Virgil has almost done it to the point where it's no longer a sellout. It's like that's his, that's his being, like that's mm -hmm. his whole vibe. So you know, it's really hard. I think as a designer coming up, it's like, do I want to align myself with this company? Do I want to align myself with this corporation? And what is that going to do to my followers? Are they really going to vibe with that? Maybe. Like, do I do a collab with Fila? And, and, and are my followers going to think I sold out because they don't like Fila? Or are they going to be like, yo, now I really like Fila. Mm -hmm. I never did before. And that's what Ye did with Adidas. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I never wore Adidas before Ye walked in the door. I just didn't. Like, I grew up in New Jersey. Texas over stripes. I mean, I won't say that on camera, but, um, you know, I was a Nike head. Yeah. You know, I grew up with Nasty Nas. Like, you know, that's what we wore where I was from. I got friends in Boston. Like, they were all day Adidas. They would never wear Nike. So, um, but when Ye walked in the door, it was like, oh, shit. Like, now. And then I started looking at Ultra Boost, and I was like, man, that's a pretty dope shoe. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't buy any, but, like, it was still like, and I think that's the effect that a real designer has on a brand. It's like, are you gonna put some halo effect on this company? Where it's like, all of a sudden, I'm looking at like, you know, soccer jerseys for my kids, Adidas track pants, things that have nothing to do with Kanye West because he stepped foot in the building. And I think we can see that like that's happened, yeah. you know? So like as a designer, you have, to, you have to say that to the corporation. Like, yo, do you know what I'm gonna do for your brand, right? Like, have that, like, have, be that confident. And sometimes as an artist, really tough to dig deep down inside and build up that confidence that like what you're doing is right and you can put your stamp on everything. But that's what art's all about, man. It's like, bring that out, you know? Like, let people know that like, you've never seen what I can do until you've seen how I can collab with your company. Like nobody saw a pair of Jordan 1s until um, the same way until Virgil cut cut up the tongue and like, sliced off the you know the 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 upper and you know i mean just like wild like took off the swoosh and put it back on stitch like no one's seen that before and some people are like oh he just rethought a shoe that existed yeah but no one did that right mm -hmm. it's easy for you to say now because it's been done right but no one was doing that before and now everyone's like oh how do i cut this up it's like come on man yeah you know find your own lane you yeah. know so like it's really it's really easy to hate on it after the fact but it's very hard to think of it before. So when I, you know, what I would say to designers is like, you know, look at the look at life in, in your lens, and say what can I do to make this better, and then go walk into that meeting and say you've never seen what I can do to your product, and this is why you need to hire me. That is a great approach, and I'm going to play devil's advocate sure. there. <laughs> and the reason why is because when I look at uh, Adidas, we're talking about them. The CEO gets on um, Bloomsburg Report, and he's talking about the latest uh, earnings report. Sure. And the interviewer brings up Kanye West. Yep. He plays Kanye, I don't think he plays him to the side, but he doesn't give yeah. that brand yeah. or that portion of the business yeah. the appropriate, uh, I guess, recognition to what it's doing to the brand. Sure. And Nike was so fearful of him disrupting their whole business based on the attention that he was driving. And I've yeah. seen it across other athletes that have been Nike athletes as well. Yeah. One of my good friends, Calvin Johnson, they could have done so much more with that brand, but they didn't. Yeah. Um, and so that brings so up- So why? So why, yeah. right? Yeah. And well, I can, I'll give you 
my personal viewpoint, and this is not the viewpoint of Yeezy, I don't work there anymore, yeah. so I can speak on this from my own personal standpoint. If I am the CEO of Adidas, and I have my investors, and I have my shareholders, and I have my prospective shareholders in the marketplace, if I get up there and announce that Kanye West is the sole reason why my brand grew 5X over the last three, five years, what's gonna happen if he walks away? Yeah. And to my investors are like, what's going to happen if it doesn't work out or if suddenly that business declines for some reason? Like, that's utter ruin, right? Yeah. So you have to tell your investors that everything else in the company is going great. And I'm not saying it's not. Like, I'm not, I'm not making any statement because I really don't know how that company is performing other than Yeezy. Um, I can look at it and, and just from a, you know, you know, a consumer standpoint and just from a, uh, a fan, yeah. I can look at it and say like, oh, those shoes are selling out. Like those shoes are not, they sat on the shelf. But like, if I'm, you know, Casper, I'm gonna get up there and say, we're the strongest we've ever been. And, you know, the sales of, of this have boosted our growth. Soccer's been great. Like we continue, like that's a diverse portfolio. You're not gonna put all your eggs in one basket in Kanye West, because the minute you do that, you're gonna sink your company if that doesn't pan out or, you know, Anything could happen. So it sounds like... Plus, he's very mercurial. So like, yeah. you know, you never know how it's going to play out. And that's know? all artists, really. It's I wouldn't artists. say all, but that is yeah. a majority of artists. Right. It's a tough <laughs> thing to harness, right? Yeah. And I'm sure for them, I'm sure there's some nights when they sweat, you know, they're like, what's going to happen next? But that's dealing with Kanye West. You know? so, so are designers outside of the brand disruptors? Is social media a possible disruptor to fashion? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think the job of a designer, a, a true a true artist, is to disrupt and to make you look at things in a way that you've never seen anything before. And I only know this because I grew up with an artist in my household who was like, why do things have to look like this? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put something out there that you've never seen before. And that's like, why do you walk through an art gallery and something speaks to you? Or like, you know, you have to connect in a way that somebody's never seen and that also speaks to them on many levels. So like when somebody like you wants to buy a pair of shoes, you can't just look at the shoe and be like, that's wild, I've never seen that before. You gotta be like, that's wild and I wanna put that on my foot, right? So like, that's what a good designer does and, and they are the ultimate disruptors. Mm -hmm.